welcome to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. What fresh spore of madness is this? I don't know. Seems normal to me. Learned something new about you today, Norman. That's twice in a row now. Yay. So, anywho. I- <laughs> yes. Actually, what am I saying? What am I saying? We learned more about Torterra last time. Ah, true that. And talking about Torterra, he's joining us this week. Yay. I'm being held against my own will. I'm stuck watching a show that makes me curious on why this is a, a show intended for kids. Well, you are stuck at home with nothing to do, so why not watch this show in its entirety? There's three seasons of it, and it's on Netflix. Yay! Yeah, but you gave me the wrong first impression! Oh, push pa! Push, push that aside! You should see the Christmas special! <laughs> oh, Jesus. I don't even want to yes. know. I'm not going to ask. Actually, it wasn't a, a flawed first impression, Torterra. This is pretty much part of the course of the show. It's like, what are you doing? What? 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 Uh, but anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review the America's Ladybug. And how, how do you say it, Silver? Like, I just call it the America's Ladybug. I thought it was Miraculous, The Adventures of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Uh, I think that's in different country then. Yeah, but anyway, uh, Miraculous Ladybug, Tales of whatever it is, uh, Season 3, Episode 17. So, yay! In this episode, Ladybug and Cat Noir each get the others miraculous when they must take on a Jew. Hmm person's name who reflect doll yes uh who has become reflect doll again and now has a seti monster okay that's a lot to take in and this may not be the best episode to review because new things are introduced but don't care much fun so first impressions are in order silver what do you think Okay, it is true that because this is, like, episode 17 of the third season, there's a lot I haven't seen, including, apparently, the introduction of a new villainess, a new dynamic between uh, the... I don't even know what they're called as beings. There's Tiki, and there's Plague, and they are the Miraculous, or they're spirits of the Miraculous? I think they are spirits of the Miraculous. They give... What the powers to the thing that they inhibit, like uh, the ladybug miraculous is in an earring, while the cat noir miraculous is in a ring, and so on. Well, I'll have much more to say as we get into the episode, but I will make a prediction. Within this review, I shall go on a slight tangent about gargoyles and Green Lantern. Oh, interesting. Yes. Is that about it? For now. All right, then. And Tara, what do you think? First impressions. What? <laughs> That's all I could... I mean, I don't really watch a lot of the Miraculous Ladybugs, so jumping into this, this is all new to me still. Like, the... Uh, like all these characters are new to me, even though they'd be like, "Oh, you, you did this to your hair." I'd be like, "Really? Did she always had it like that?" <laughs> <laughs> oh man! In hindsight, this was not the best episode for. Yeah, you know what? I don't care. It's a lot of fun. Well, as you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah. So is a pandemic. <laughs> uh, I don't see any of these folks practicing social distancing. Harumph. Wasn't this before all that, though? Yeah, yeah, that is true. Don't sass me, boy. I'm <laughs> I'm projecting rage. Uh, boys. But anywho, um, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. And the reason why is because it goes for that, I won't say trope, but it goes for the what would happen if the other war, the other's uh, power or costume and so on and yeah it's it's fun to see Mm, did any of you guys seen that what um adventure of batman like the the animated series batman i did i saw but i've seen a lot of 
shows. And there's this one clip going around the Facebook and so on where uh, Batman's missing. So they ask Superman to dress up as Batman to take care of Gotham for a bit. Remember that one? Yes. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> or there's the DC uh, Justice League action where Batman, Superman, and Stargirl all swap bodies. Oh, God. Oh, uh, that sounds fun. So I like those kind of tropes. It's... It's interesting to see how the writers deal with it. Mm. Uh, but anywho, if you guys are interested in watching the episode, pause here and go do so. And well, we are going to spoil the episode. So you have been warned. And well, welcome back. If you have watched the episode, it's kind of a fun episode to watch. So let's get into the story. We catch our heroes saving the world or saving Paris again from the evils of the bad guy, the butterfly guy. Yeah. Hawk Moth. Yeah. Beware the dreaded Hawk Moth. <laughs> he will eat all your jackets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. That's his name? <laughs> yes, Hawk Moth. Hawk Moth. <laughs> Tara is not impressed. <laughs> Hawk Moth, breaker of your doom. <laughs> so, anywho. They banter for a bit, like Ladybug and Cat Noir banter for a bit, saying that the other has it easy because, well, uh, all Cat Noir has to do is play the fool and just act silly like a clown. And Cat Noir says, oh, Ladybug, you have it easy and stuff. And yeah, how do I put this? You're all too uptight and too serious, blah, blah, blah. So after their banter, they leave for a bit and... We here are introduced to Jellica? Ju Julica. How do you even say that name? The goth girl. Yay. So she's interested in being a model for Marinette, one of her friends, because, well, she's interested. Her brother, Luca, just says, go ahead, go try it out. You, you know you want to. So she does. And, well, they meet up at school. School's out early. And they go to Marinette's house to, well, model out her fashion and whatnot. And in doing so, they rope in the love interest for the show, Adrian, asking him to help out because he has a lot of experience in modeling because he is a model. Yay. So he agrees and, well, we have an episode. <laughs> Uh, Julika is not confident in her talent or ability to model for Marinette. And uh, yes, now I remember her name. Alia. Alia is trying to hook Marinette and Adrian up. And well, let's just say that in doing so, it hurts Julika's feeling of being a model. It's not good. I'm going to pause here. So Silver, what do you think of the setup and whatnot? Well, it seems a bit more normal. There's kids, they're worried about their relationships. They're a little unsure of what they want to do or who they want to be. It's a bit more identifiable than it's been in the past. I noticed that Chloe does not make an appearance in this episode, and therefore there's no artificial nastiness, just characters trying to, to do their best and not knowing what that is. Okay, this is where I will bring gargoyles into the mix. Woo! There's a scene that has played in my head a lot lately when watching modern cartoons. Uh, in Gargoyles, a gargoyle from England, Griff, is transported from World War II to then modern day England, uh, London, which was in the 1990s. First thing he sees is a guy in punk drab walking by playing a Game Boy and goes right past two gargoyles because he's completely fixated by the screen. Griff is then so overcome he nearly faints into oncoming traffic. And I feel that way when I hear about the characters trying to set up their own website. <laughs> and I realize that that is the new norm. Kids and social media, it is, it is now infused in our entertainment. I feel the same way watching Equestria Girls. So, yes, this is Old Man Silver. Meh. <laughs> looking at this saying, oh, your kids are making a website. Meh. I remember the most expensive website was Space Jam. <laughs> but it was awful. <laughs> oh, well. I think it's still up too, by the way. It is, but it is 
it first by today's standards, that's first grade web design. But at the time, it was the most advanced and expensive website out there. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, stuff. So he, the fact that these kids, social media and, and the internet in general, are now so infused in our culture that they're not just distractions or, or uh, one-note events for entertainment. They are the norm. They are the steady undercurrent. Because all this is Marinette trying to launch her own website with fashion photos. And I just find that kind of weird. Really now? You don't find it norm? No, because I did not have that growing up as a kid. Therefore, I am marveling at how it has infused itself into young people's entertainment. Huh. All righty then. Um, shifting to Terra, what do you think? Um, I can't, I don't really say much. I, I just pretty much, well, as of now, like, this section right here, I'm getting the impression that, you know, they're following their dreams. I mean, like I said, I don't know much, but I know that I see this goth girl. She's trying to get out of her comfort zone. And I see this girl with the glasses making her own stuff. And it's like, yeah, I get it. I get it. You want to follow your dreams. You want to become a clothing designer or a photographer. And then you got blonde guy being a professional modeler. And all of a sudden, the, um, the goth girl that's out of a comfort zone, they just replace her with the ladybug girl. I don't know. I don't know their <laughs> names. <laughs> it's all good, man. But that's that's all I got so far. Like like I said, I don't know much about the miraculous ladybug. <laughs> it's all good. So, anywho, I'm carrying on. Alia uh, ropes in Marinette and Adrian for the shoot because like i mentioned before she really really wants to hook those two up she wants to ship them ship them hard i'm not even sweetie bloom is this aggressive a shipper <laughs> <laughs> so anywho uh in doing so they uh, marionette and adrian have to take off their accessories which is the earring and ring and for marionette it's where ladybug lives <laughs> the um, her um kuami tiki lives and for plague it's in the ring and so on so taking them off they both say that this is a terrible idea and they both say that hey you'll be we'll be close so if anything happens uh, i'll get you out no problem so once they reveal themselves they look great but alia noticed that hey uh, marinette is making a fool of herself so why don't we go out and have some fresh air that will change the uh, situation and stuff and while this is happening, uh, Jellica is feeling depressed and feeling she has been cheated out of her destiny of being a model. And with that negative emotion, uh, Hawk Moth appears and... Hawk Moth, the greatest villain of them all, but not really. <laughs> yeah. uh, he appears and uh, Akuma ties Jellica. And also, there's this new girl named Natalie, was it? I think so. So, anywho... Uh, yeah, I, yeah? This character, for me, is out of nowhere. Who? And technically, what? she's the assistant for the Aggress family. Huh. She's close to... Uh, what's his name? Talkmouth, yes. So he knows his secret and whatnot, and he wants to help. So she becomes the peacock miraculous and creates what they call a city monster. Yay. So I'm going to fast forward for a bit. Uh, Hawk Moth imbues Jellica with powers and also a big giant mecha. And all he wants is the miraculous from Ladybug and Cat Noir. And she agrees and she wrecks Havoc. And her way of wreaking havoc is changing everyone to look like her in a big giant mecha. Wasted. Wasted potential. So while that's going on, we get to see Adrian and Marinette model in front of the Eiffel Tower, just posing and stuff. While they check out the picture, uh, Reflect Doll is, uh, what was her name? Uh, Reflecta, something like that. I'm just going to call her Jerica because it's easier to remember. So she comes in and zaps everyone. Everyone in the area. Including our heroes, Ernest and Adrian. So now they look the same 
and well chaos happens i'm gonna pause here so tara what do you think can't we say much like uh we see that um the goth girl's ups- upset because you know she didn't get what she wanted but i mean it's not really okay it's kind of your fault that you didn't say say anything or that you didn't stick up for yourself you're very quiet i don't know if she's new or if she's a recurring character or not um, but then you see, you see this other girl, the, the bad one, just comes out of nowhere. It's like, oh, okay, a new villain, even though I just got here, but okay, <laughs> welcome aboard. <laughs> but, then, but the thing that makes me curious about her is her, uh, I guess you could say her peacock pendant or whatever. Mm-hmm. It was sparking. I don't know if um, it's going to be one of those plots where it's like, yeah, I used to be a good person, but I'm being mind controlled right now. So that's why it's being on the fritz. Hmm. And actually, I got another question. Yeah. Why does the um, uh, the blonde guy's driver almost look like a monkey? That is a good question. Yes. A gorilla. Because I see that, I'm like, is that a monkey? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's all I really got. <laughs> all right. And, and Silver, what about you? How to put this? Again... Part of me is appreciating the shift in cartoons and presentation. And some of it, I'm not sure if because this is a French cartoon, some of the gestures and cultural norms are different. Case in point, when uh, An- Angela, the, the goth girl? Uh, Je- Jelica, I think. Jelica. Jelica, yeah. When Jelica is talking to her blue-haired brother, mm-hmm. who's apparently a musician, he gives her a peck on the cheek. And was, at first I was like, oh, is is that her boyfriend? Uh, no. Okay, brother. Good to know. Uh, so that's not something I'm I'm usually aware of. And then Rose. Uh, I thought Rose might be Jellica's girlfriend because she gives her a kiss on the cheek when they say goodbye. To just, you know. FYI, she is. Okay. Well, she says that. But then when Reflect Doll is there, she said, declaring, we can be BFFs forever. I was like, wait, best friends forever? I thought you were dating. And so, again, I wonder, is this is this the way they can code in a lesbian couple? Or is this uh, French? And, you know, we had that episode where kissing was apparently the French norm. <laughs> oh. So, so, there's that question. But then there's also the, the fact that Marinette designs clothing that is unisex. And I don't know if that really works. Again, this is me coming from a different generation. But if Adrian walked down the street with a beret and earrings and all that, I think he'd be mocked by a lot of people, at least growing up. So it's it's a different time, is what I'm saying. I don't know. I notice a cultural shift. And often entertainment is both a, the indicator and educator of those shifts. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. Uh, being, well, for me being quote unquote, sorry, not quote unquote, being, for me being Asian, living in Southeast Asia, everything for me is culturally different uh, from your, from the American TV shows to the cartoons to Japanese TV shows and cartoons and even uh, French cartoons and whatnot. For me, everything's different. But, the most strange part is for me to know what a Walmart is, what a uh, Taco Bell is, because Taco Bell hasn't reached our shores to be that popular, but I still know what it is. You can lead a long, happy life without either of those. What, a Walmart? Yes. In fact, you'll lead a longer, happier life if you don't work at Walmart <laughs> and don't eat Taco Bell. <laughs> Uh, that is also true. That is also true. I I don't hear Torterra protesting. <laughs> no, I got nothing to say. <laughs> but I mean, with Adrian wearing a, a beret and all that jewelry, yeah, I'm, I I I feel like in American culture that's may still be frowned upon, but that is transitioning. But silver, isn't it? Uh, don't the what American has this phrase? Oh, he's European, <laughs> and said, so, ah, okay. Honestly, I'm not. I'm not going to encourage that. I don't. I'm trying to avoid stereotypes and keep an open mind. But you make sure you to... I'm just learning what I see on TV, my friend. 
Now, I gotta say that Reflect Doll's power to make everyone into an aggressive cosplay. <laughs> I'm like, that's your evil plan? Mm hmm. Make everyone look like her. And you know, in, in all honesty, uh, there's this one time in a convention where everybody was wearing uh, costumes from Attack on Titans. So it's been done there before. <laughs> I went to a, a big convention in Los Angeles m many years ago. Uh, anime Expo, and everyone... I'd never heard of Attack on Titan, but I saw these cosplayers. I was like, why is everyone wearing giant toasters on their hips? <laughs> uh, because they want to make toast. Must be! Yeah. Must be! It's a portable toaster. Oh. Wouldn't you like toast, Silver? Toast is good. I, I actually had toast for breakfast this morning. See? So did I. <laughs> Whoa! We're, we're breakfast buddies! <laughs> Yay! Now, one of the weirder things, this is new in this show, mm -hmm. because a develop has happened in our absence, that Plague and Tiki, the two miraculous spirits mm -hmm. or whatever, are actually visiting and talking, and they know the other person's identity. Mm -hmm. And then Plague commits the most unforgivable crime. Inexcusable. Oh, was it? He calls Tiki Sugar Cube. That is blatant violation of Applejack's catchphrase, <laughs> and I will not stand for it. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. So, anywho. Uh... It is that bad, all right. <laughs> but, anywho, I'm going to carry on. I'm going to carry on. So, it... <laughs> oh, I, oh, I can carry on, all right. I'll, I'll, last week, I've carried on about a whale in a lake. This time, I'll talk about Plaque stealing my, one of my favorite characters' catchphrases. I can go bitter and carry on like no one's business. Uh, soon enough, soon enough. Wee-oo! <laughs> well, anywho, um, as this is happening, uh, the car that they came in uh, gets flipped over by Reflex Doll's Mecha. So, it hits and it scatters all of the content of the car out so all of their belongings are scattered on the floor tiki and plague needs to find their um, miraculous and give it to their owners the problem is their owner looks like jedica they fly around and notice the owner marinette notice plague and says oh cat noir's not here anyway just give it to me and i'll transform into what did she call herself? Cat Noir? L Lady Noir. Lady Noir, yes. So she transforms herself into Lady Noir, which is kind of a cool design. And so does Adrian, who transforms himself into not Ladybug, but Boy Bug, was it? Uh, I mostly know him as Bug Boy. Yeah, I think he called himself Bug Boy. So, yay, he transforms, or they transform. And they try to defeat the Mecha. And they realize that each other's power is not as easy as it looks. They keep commenting on um, their skills and whatnot. And let's just say that they have a hard time. So as they try to understand each other's powers, uh, the Big Giant Mecha is destroying Paris. Oh no. As they go on, they manage to get into the Mecca and get Jellica out. And they get her, or they turn her back to normal. And all that is for naught because the big giant robot is on a rampage. And they need to figure out how to stop the big giant robot. Adrian pulls out the, whatchamacallit, lucky charm. And he got no idea what to do. In trying to figure something out, they notice that the big giant robot has a screw. Ah, this is confusing. But anywho, they discover where the feather is and destroy it and turn everything back to normal. I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? The design and whatnot. Well, design. Actually, this is an interesting point and this is where I shall bring my Star uh, Green Lantern reference uh -huh. into play. Because mostly, okay, with Lady Noir, it is basically uh, Cat Noir, but with a long ponytail. The costume is the same. Yeah. Now, but it's different when Adrian transforms into Bug Boy. <laughs> because now suddenly his outfit is 
uh, has these black stripes, which actually uh, enhance a, mus a masculine muscular physique. Now, I find that kind of weird because earlier they were dressing him up in a u what was meant to be unisex clothing. But that idea is not carrying forward now to a superhero. So I'm getting a mixed message from now. I, t I said uh, stories can be reflections of culture. Well, which message are you giving that you don't have to you don't have to worry about dressing a certain way or do you? But in all honesty, if you're talking about superhero costumes, uh, is there? Uh, w would you like to see Cat Noir in tight red spandex now? No, no. What are you implying? <laughs> um, no, actually, actually, what I'm thinking of is in the Green Lantern universe, mm -hmm. there are different color themed cores. So there's a Green Lantern core. There's the Red Lantern, the Yellow Lantern, and the Star Sapphires, Violet. I don't know if either of you have ever read the Green Lantern comics. I am not versed, but I do know of their history. Yeah, I, I know the Green Lantern, but I don't read much of the comics either. When they introduced the Star Sapphire Corps, or just the Star Sapphires, really, all of them were female. They were the one um, pretty much exclusively female core. And all of them were what some call idealized, others call sexualized uh, body types and all in very revealing spandex. Folks at home, you probably know uh, comics reputation for scandid, scandally clad superheroines. Mm -hmm. Well, that caused some debate within the comic community, especially about, well, one, what happens when you have a male star sapphire? Are they gonna wear a costume like that? Now in time, they changed the design so that black covered up the uh, sections where the skin is bare but at some point there was a star hal jo uh no no not hal jordan john stewart became a star sapphire briefly and you have to scroll down to see this but his outfit actually reminds me a lot of uh bug boy because they use black to accentuate a male physique while hinting at the colors normally associated with the feminine superheroes so I see the same thing at play with this design change for the Ladybug outfit. And again, I'm just intrigued that you don't need to change anything for Ladybug to slip into Cat Noir's out costume, but you do if it's the reverse. Hmm. But I'm trying to remember Cat Noir's original costume, but there's sub subtle differences between the Cat Noir versus Lady Noir's outfit like uh most most of the ponytail as far as i know uh there's a few like uh the shoulder pads like for cat noir uh he has like upper body armor it's not visible but it's there and lady noir i'm trying to remember she mostly has it kind of tight spandex or something like that. it looks like that what I don't understand is why she said it's easier on the shoulders. Like, there's nothing on your shoulders. I, uh, joke, probably. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, but I actually have to disagree with you on one thing, Norman. Ladybug does not struggle at all with Cat Noir's uh, abilities. In fact, she seems to take to it like a fish to water. True, but uh, from what I can tell and from what I saw, it's mostly understanding how to use uh, her powers like the subtle differences between Cat Noir and Ladybug are Ladybug analyzes things a lot before striking uh, she is mostly a thinker before acting while Cat Noir is action first talk later so Cat Noir mostly runs on impulse while Ladybug is more on planning and stuff that's why uh, I, I think there's a subtle line where uh, activating the uh, what you would call this lucky charm is a process where for ladybug knowing the enemy knows their weaknesses and whatnot but cat noir when he activates it he got no idea what's going on like the whole what you would call this lucky charm doesn't give him the answer 
is just a tool of how do I use this item to defeat said enemy. Yeah, I understand. But at the same time, Ladybug never admits to any sort of difficulty. I mean, when she strikes the robot with uh, the cataclysm attack, mm -hmm. Adrian says, I've never fought something like this, so I don't know if this is right. So while she spends the whole fight lecturing him about how he's not doing it right, uh, he's actually more respectful of her. And honestly, I, I feel like there's a terrible imbalance in all this. That it would have been interesting if Ladybug realized that uh, because he doesn't have her resources, Cat Noir has to rely more on his sense of humor to keep the villain off balance or distracted. But she doesn't. I think the only thing she acknowledges is that she feels a bit more playful uh, wearing this costume, even steals some of his lines. Yeah. So it seems like it's imbalance where he's learning respect and adoration and appreciation for all that she does, and she's talking down to him the whole time. And I'm like, this is not fun. This is not mutual respect. This is not teamwork. And again, I'm not sure this is a good message. Probably, probably, but eh, if. It's one of those episodes where it's a hard balance to, well, it's a hard story to balance out because I kind of enjoy because they swap places and usually when they have those kind of situations, it's always fun. Tara, you got anything to add? Well, you guys pretty much took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, I like the idea of these two... Um heroes switching their powers but like silver said because i too was expecting it where you know these two haven't really used their powers but um i guess ladybug who's now lady noir she's like you know just right away she's like yeah i i'm an expert already and it's like the other guy's like oh i'm still trying to get used to it it's like what <laughs> oh wow there, there there is a future episode where ladybug goes insane with all of the um miraculous like, how the, uh, an example is, uh, Silva, you remember Kamen Rider DK? Uh, I have seen parts of it. I haven't seen the whole series. Uh, oh, there's, there's a newer rider that has the same ability where he can copy previous riders. Yes. I, I forgot. Was it the new one? Oh, uh, Geo. Yeah. Kamen Rider Geo. That's Z-I-O. Yeah, he has the same thing, right? He Yes, he has the power to take strength from the past common writers and he's going to grow up to be the worst tyrant in history yeah. so and he's like wow bummer yeah. but anywho um in the future marionette has the same thing where she uses multiple uh miraculous like how zeo does it <laughs> well that's just scary yeah but that's a story for a different day anyway i'm going to carry on and wrap this up so with the day safe um uh, Bug Boy just turns everything or fixes everything back to normal. The bad guy laments their failure and says that no problem, we can always try next time. Bug Boy and Lady Noir run on the rooftop to go to their separate places and transform while saying that yeah, your, your thing is not as easy as it looks and yeah, mutual respect, quote unquote. And yeah, we, we, we separate for a bit, see you later, and they transform back and they promise their Kuami never to remove their miraculous ever again. And with that, they meet up with their friends, do a photo shoot, and uh, Marinette apologizes to Jellica because she didn't really know how much this really meant to her. And in the end, they change outfits and continue on with the photo shoot. If that episode ends, yay! Yeah. So, anywho, uh, um, Silver, final thoughts. This was certainly less strange than many of the previous episodes we've seen. I still have many questions about where these other characters are coming from. Uh, w what is all this? Why suddenly is Hawk Moth have his own miraculous spirit? Is that part and parcel? What the hell? Up, what is up with the uh, peacock lady's uh, spirit? That's just yay! Murder, death, kill, rip and tear. <laughs> rip and tear, indeed. From what I can understand of the peacock miraculous, the peacock miraculous is uh, sick or broken and needs to be fixed. 
but when I look at contrasting what's going on in their civilian lives versus the presentation superhero, there is this weird clash of ideas or messages. And I'm not sure what, if anything, they're trying to say. But if you're doing something with, if you're putting all this stuff out there without knowing what you're trying to say, I think that's bad writing. So I, could, I feel like there's this veil of culturalism, maybe a generational gap that I'm having trouble seeing through. But at the same time, I'm also like, you, you're trying to have it both ways. And I'm not sure you're succeeding. In fact, I think you're falling short. Hmm. I guess so. I, I haven't really thought about looking at the episode that way. From in all honesty, my point of view is, oh wow, they change outfits. Yay. <laughs> I don't know. The changing the changing costumes is a fun spectacle. I think because I'm old and jaded, me, I find that I get past the spectacle rather fast. Uh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Um, but anyway, uh, Tara, final thoughts. This this still confuses me. <laughs> really. Well, I do like the, I wouldn't say the story much. I do like the near the ending though, how they change powers. I I, feel, I don't know if I've seen something like that before, but I do like the concept where it's like, oh yeah, I've never used, I never done this before. I never used these kinds of powers. So they're basically, you know, getting out of the comfort zone and trying new things. Basically, what I said earlier with the girl, you know, being a creator and stuff like that. They they're trying new things, but it just bugs me how they get used to it like right away and it's like oh yeah I, I already know how to do this now it's like oh like at least give him some time to practice like even though it's an intense scene at least give him some time you can't just make them learn it right away mm, true but one of the few things that are there by muscle memory is that uh, both of them know how to quote-unquote fight and jump around so that's second nature to them but using the tools, what they have, that's something else. But anywho, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun to watch and catch. I do enjoy uh, the switch for Miraculous with uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir. It's interesting to see the other designs. So uh, it's... Uh, it's not ingrained in their costume because if we were to see the Ladybug Miraculous on Adrian, it would be really, really, really strange to see a onesie latex outfit on a dude. Yeah, nah, nah, that would be all kind of wrong. Ain't that right, Silver? You know, no, I'm not going to judge. I would Normally, I'm like, yes, heck, yes, heck. But it's usually when they're like having a leather clad boy press himself against a window <laughs> or, or strapping, strapping a blindfold on him, binding him to a kite and shoving your yo-yo in his mouth. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, that um, bothers, that what? still bothers. That still gives me nightmares. <laughs> a onesie. A onesie is not anywhere near as disturbing. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> otherwise, this is just crazy. And you're sick. You're sick. <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I do like how they try to do the lesson of uh, getting out of your comfort zone, but only to fail and get pulled into the dark side. Mm. Like you mentioned before, Silver, if... Everyone has a bad day in Paris. Paris will perish. If everyone has a bad day. Well, yep. but thankfully it's always bright, sunny, and remarkably clean in this version of Paris. Eh, true that, true that. Well, Although these days I, don't, I doubt Ladybug and Cat Noir could do anything against COVID-19. <laughs> Even Hawk Moth is like, oh, there's no one for me to akumatize because they're all staying indoors. You know, uh, I'm still, so bored. You know, uh, see still but he still could because, like, what, Jellica? She was indoors, remember? She was indoors, but then there's no one to terrorize outside. It's just boring. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I do like your views on the episode, Silver. It does ask a lot of questions about um, Ladybug and Cat Noir. Like, are they equal? Are they not? And whatnot. And 
the way that she treats Cat Noir or Bug Boy, it's, it doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem, what I'm going to call this, equal. So, yeah, food for thought, food for thought. But anywho, um, that's my views. Silver, what are you going to do next week? Well, I think, uh, you know, Ladybug is all about this will they, won't they with her and Adrian and all mm -hmm. that, which they will. <laughs> uh, so no mystery there. But we can have a different relationship as we go back to My Little Pony for the Big Mac question. Mm. That will be a as fun we, one. The the last slice of life, quote, quote, for the show before we hit the final the final episodes. Yeah, and this episode here is a fun one because Discord is involved. So anything with Discord is a lot of fun. Ain't it right? <laughs> Not for Ponyville's <laughs> residents. <laughs> but anywho, that will be next week's review. So <clears throat> if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, they can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also support my channel and videos uh, through Patreon or Ko-fi under Silver Quill. And you can always do a search on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill and I shall appear. And on Wednesdays, you can check Equestria Daily where I will post editorials. And like we talked about last week, I'm not sure where the comic book industry stands, but I remain hopeful that we'll soon be seeing season 10 and the My Little Pony uh, Transformers friendship is friendship in disguise. We'll see that. Yeah, guy. I can't wait for that one. That one's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I do like how they're pairing uh, Autobot and ponies, like what Rainbow Dash is with Wingblade, and those two, not, I'm not sure about Wingblade, but... Applejack, sorry, Rainbow Dash is all about speed, and Wingblade will have a fun time catching up with her. Well, actually, Wingblade might get frustrated. She's often more responsible. Ah, ah, yes. So it's very different personalities in my eyes. Mm, that is interesting. That is very interesting. What about uh, what Pinkie Pie? Who does Pinkie Pie have? Pinkie Pie. Uh, it's not her in discord no Pinkie Pie is she up against yeah she's up against Soundwave up against or with because which version of Soundwave is this the good song <laughs> he's, st he, he's still a Decepticon the bad oh. it's, it's bad it's bad oh okay because I'm very confused with what Soundwave is and uh yeah so much confusion like, I remember, what, Megatron being a good guy? What? Oh, well, I read the idea of Keanu, so it all made sense to me. But you have to get very much into the backstory to understand where we got, where we were. Uh, so, you know what? Maybe after the show. Maybe after the show. So, uh, Tara, what about you? Where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324. Or they can just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page and my Ko-fi page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And switch to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on Prenivive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the Review and Discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Amy, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also my stuff like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Verquil. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. So, got any more ideas of which character ch change powers for a bit and have fun? Like, uh, I, I got one. Which is? Captain Ginyu. Captain oh, Ginyu! <laughs>
Actually, along that same idea, Raven and Starfire from Teen Titans. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot about that. That one was a good one. Also, a correction. In, when we ever do get to see uh, My Little Pony Transformers, it's Pinkie Pie v- uh, versus uh, Shockwave. Shockwave. Oh. Ooh. That's going to be fun. So, the ultimate in Cybertronian logic versus the ultimate in Pony non logic. <laughs> Is Discord there? Like, I don't remember. It's he and Fluttershy against Soundwave. Oh. Evo- oh, man. Pony, you gotta explain this to me, man. You gotta explain the timeline. For Transformers? Yeah, like, what are they doing? There'll, there'll be something else. You know what? That'd make a good podcast. The History of IDW Transformers. Yeah. Yep. You know what? That'll be a future thing. Yeah, that'll be a future thing. Okay. Anyway, bye-bye. There we go. Bye-bye. Bye.